The American Broadcasting Company presents A Date with Judy, starring Louise Erickson as Judy and John Brown as father. Hello? Hello, Judy. This is Oogie. Oh, hello, Oogie. What time will you be over tonight? Yeah, uh, about tonight, Judy. Uh, well, we men were kind of planning on going bowling. Stag, of course. Just we men. And I wondered... Of course, if you'd rather I didn't. Oh, dear, you don't have to say another word. Of course I want you to go out with the boys. After all, no matter how glamorous we women are, you men need the companionship of other men. That's right, Judy. Oh. What's the matter? You agreed with me. Melvin. Yes, dear. Want to go to the movies? Yeah, Humphrey Bogart is playing on Tokyo Joe. Dora, I'd do anything in the world for you. I'd move mountains and rivers, but... But you don't want to go to the movies. Not tonight. I don't think anything could get me out of the house. It's so nice and quiet and peaceful. Oh, for the love of heaven! Will somebody please tell Judy to turn that radio down? Will somebody please tell Judy to turn that radio down? Father, please, you're making so much noise. You're... I'm making so much noise? Yes. Oogie and his orchestra just started a practice in the living room. Oh, I thought you turned the radio on in there. Why do Oogie and his orchestra always have to practice in our house? Well, they don't always, Father. They usually practice at Oogie's house, except when his father has one of his headaches. You know how Mr. Pringle suffers from headaches, dear. And I know how he gets them, believe me. Maybe is anything... Oh, hi, everybody. Good evening, Oogie. Hello, Oogie. Hi, Maestro. Gee, Mr. Foster, I owe you an apology. Well, I'm glad. I didn't know you were home, or I would have invited you in the other room so you could have heard us better. (laughs) I heard, Oogie, I heard. Okay, here we go, fellas. A one, a two. I'm not a whoop, I never flip, I do not twerk. I'm not the least, she, she. Well, Judy, it was wonderful, Oogie. Utterly wonderful. Mr. Foster, how did you like it? Utterly. (laughs) Thanks. Then I'll do the second chorus for you. The second chorus? Yeah. Okay, fellas. Dora. Yes, dear. Let's go to the movies. Well, you know, I really enjoyed that picture. Yeah, I guess Humphrey Bogart is braver than anybody. Man put out of his own home. Out of his own home. Oh, now, Melvin, when Judy was born, you know we said many times that our house would always be open to anyone she wanted to bring into it. Her friends would be our friends. Her dates, our dates. Well, I didn't think she'd be having dates with an orchestra at the time. (laughs) No, seriously, Dora, we've got to do something about this. Like what? I don't know, but ever since he wrote that song, at least a year ago, I've heard it time and time again. I bet she sings it to her twice a week. (laughs) Well... He doesn't write many songs, you know. Thank heaven for that. (laughs) Well, you can't blame him for wanting to serenade her a little. Remember, you wrote me a song once. Yes, I did, didn't I? (laughs) (laughs) And you and your fraternity quartet used to come around underneath the dormitory window and sing it to me at least once a week. That that was a song, though. Yes, it was. I certainly can't compare that with I've got a date with Judy. My quartet was different, too. It certainly was. And those four boys got a job later, playing in vaudeville. Oh, I'll never forget how excited we were when they got that three-week contract. Dawn, that's it. That's it. What's it? That's what the Hartlicks ought to do. Get a job nights so they won't have to come around here. (laughs) See, if they get some dates, you know, playing around at local dances and stuff, they wouldn't spend their nights here driving me crazy. Oh, oh, oh what an idea. I'm going to suggest the matter to them right now. Hello, dear. Oh, hello, Father. Did you like the movie, Mother? I loved it. Uh, where do you go, Judy? Oh, he and the boys went home. They did? Mm-hmm. And I don't like to say this, but you certainly weren't very charming to them. I wasn't charming to those fine, professional-like performers? Why, those boys ought to be playing professional dates at dead parties and bazaars and dances. Father, what a brilliant idea. Brilliant. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> I wonder why it never occurred to me. Oh, how could I have missed it? It's been right here.
right here all the time under my nose, staring me in the face. Doesn't that make you a little cross-eyed? <laughs> it's so obvious. Who would be better equipped than Oogie to go on the radio? Is the radio? Well, of course. As you said, why should he be wasted? The world should hear him, the world. But, Judy, a person just can't go on the radio helter-skelter just because he wants to. A person has to, uh, has to have a sponsor. Oh, don't worry about that, Father. Oogie will get a sponsor. How? Well, there's nothing to it, Randolph. After all, who could advertise a product better than Oogie Pringle? Lassie. <laughs> Randolph, you're just too young and immature to understand. Yes, indeed. I know just the man who'll be only too happy to sponsor Oogie Pringle in his high school hot licks. Who? You. you me? <laughs> oh, for the love of heaven. Let's pause for a moment. Louise Erickson and Richard Crenna will return in a date with Judy right after these messages. Now let's rejoin Louise Erickson and Richard Crenna in A Date with Judy. No, no, no. But, Oogie, do you want to waste your genius forever? Oh, no, but Oogie, I... look ahead. You'll start at the radio here on the local radio station. Then, after a few months, you'll be getting offers from Cleveland or Cincinnati. And then, who knows? Maybe New York, Paris. <laughs> you lead a fascinating, sophisticated existence. The friend of great opera singers, the famous composers, of song pluggers. Which would you rather be? A little frog in a big puddle? Or a big puddle in a little frog? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Oogie. Why, it'll be the making of you. You'll be famous. I don't want to be famous, Judy. It, it might come between us. Between us? Well, sure. If I get as successful and fascinating as you say, why, I'm liable to turn women's heads. <laughs> you wouldn't want that, would you? I can face the future unabashed, Ubi. Why cannot you? Because I'm very fond of the present. <laughs> I am willing to risk losing you. I am willing to make that sacrifice for the sake of your fame. But, Judy, even if I say I'm willing to go on the radio, I couldn't without a sponsor. I know, I know, and I tried to get you one. So far, unsuccessfully. But I'll succeed ere long. You'll actually get somebody to pay me for playing? Of course. Oh, by the way, uh, how much would you want for you and the boys? How about $5 a week? Very well. Now that the financial figure has been decided upon, I will now go out and get you a sponsor. And no matter what doors of big, important men I shall have to break down, never fear, I will get you one. No, no, no. But, Father, it was your idea in the first place about Ubi playing professionally. Yeah, but I didn't know that I was going to get stuck with it personally. But think of the opportunity. You can advertise your canning factory. You'll sell thousands of extra cans as a result. Isn't that true, Mother? That's true, Melvin. Isn't that true, Randolph? Uh... You see, Father, and all it will cost you is the radio time and Oogie. Oogie has cost me too much already. But I can get him very cheap for you. He would be willing to work for you for $5 a week. But anybody else, he would sell $10. You're very true. You see, I've saved you $5 a week already. You just tell Oogie to stop raiding our icebox every night and you'll save me another five dollars. <laughs> then you'll do it, Father. You'll sponsor Oogie? No, I will not. The whole idea is ridiculous. I think the people who are related to me are unsympathetic and full of lack of understanding. Oh, now, Judy. Every time I offer something constructive and valuable in the way of something concrete, I get stepped on before the germ of my idea ever gets a chance to bud into blossom. Judy, I, I'd like to go along with you on this sponsorship, but Oogie Pringle? Now, if you could offer Father Hetty Lamar for $5 a week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Run down Oogie all you want. But I will show you. And someday when he's famous and big sponsors all over the world are bidding for his services, then you'll come to me, Father, on your bended knees. Creaking. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. I'll struggle on alone somehow until I get Oogie to the top. 
But when he is there, I just want you to remember one thing. What's that? Don't try to bask in his glory. <laughs> All right, dear, I won't. <laughs> Don't say, yes, sir, I knew him when. Yes, sir, I helped that lad get where he is. Don't ever say that, Father. Promise. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried Ed Emerson's hardware shop, Judy? Yes. Well, what about Henry's Coke and Phosphate Parlor? I tried it. Well, that about washes up everybody, doesn't it? Yes. But I haven't given up yet. I am still going to get you a sponsor. After all, I've still got an ace up my sleeve. You have? Yes. Your father. My father? <laughs> oh, no, Judy. But my goodness, if your father isn't able to estimate your genius, who would be? Well, I don't know, but it wouldn't be my father. <laughs> No, no, no. But, Mr. Pringle... It's a very flattering offer, Judy, but no. You just don't know what you're turning down. Yes, I do, Judy. I know it only too well. Well, Mr. Pringle, I'm very sorry you feel this way. You're making a big mistake not sponsoring Ruby, but I'm going to make him a success in spite of you. Well, I, I can't help but admire your spirit, Judy. It's all right, Mr. Pringle. Don't be unhappy. I'll manage without you. Uh, Judy, I, I was just wondering, if the hot licks are on the radio, uh, I wouldn't have to turn it on, would I? Turn what on? The radio. Well, no, if you didn't want to. And if Oogie and the boys had a job on the radio, uh, maybe the local station would let them do their practicing there instead of here at my house? Why, I guess it would. You know, it might be worth five dollars at that. <laughs> oh, Mr. Pringle, I knew you'd come through. I knew it. I knew if anybody would be able to see Oogie's genius and talent, you would. Yeah. <laughs> You did what, dear? I got Oogie a sponsor. You did? You really did? Yes. Why, that's wonderful. Wonderful? It's a miracle. Well, how did you do it, Judy? Oh, it was nothing at all. I merely made Oogie's price a little cheaper. Cheaper than five dollars? Yes. Uh, the sponsor won't have to pay him anything. Well, that's cheaper, all right. <laughs> he was going to pay Oogie five dollars at first, but when he found out how much the airtime cost, he was forced to cut Oogie's price. Of course, there are one or two other minor drawbacks, but I'm sure in time they'll be overcome. Drawbacks? Such as what? Well, the contract with this sponsor is for only one week. He hopes by then somebody else will take the mess off his hands. I mean, uh, that somebody else, uh, richer and more wealthy than himself, will be able to pay Oogie what he so richly deserves. He wouldn't want to stand in the boy's way. Well, of course not. So the whole thing is on a temporary basis, of course, but I know oh, that after... Oh, boy, just think. For a whole week, Oogie and his high school hotlicks are going to be busy every night. Oh, not every night, Father. Uh, not every... No, every morning. Every morning? Yes. Morning time on the air is cheaper than evening time, and, of course, the sponsor had a limited budget. When's its first program, dear? Tomorrow morning. What time? I certainly want to be listening. Five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Five o'clock in the morning? Uh-huh. It so happened that that was the only time the radio station had available. But they promised me that in a week, if we had a permanent sponsor, they'd move Oogie to a much better time than 5 a.m. Oh, they did? Yes. They're going to have 6 a.m. available. <laughs> Randolph, wake up. Oh, oh, I have to. It's 4 a.m., Randolph. 4, 4 a.m.? Good night, Judy. Now, don't get back under those bed clothes. You promised to help me. Well, I was out of my mind at the time. This is the fourth time I phoned you, and you simply got to get out of bed and stay out of bed this time. This is not Oogie. And I know it's the fourth time you phoned me because I heard it ring every darn time. 
And I'm not only going to stay out of bed, but I'm going to come over to your house and complain to your parents, Judy Foster. Oh, Mr. Pringle, it's you. Yes, Mr. Pringle, it's me. I, I, I didn't mean to wake you up, Mr. Pringle. Oh, you didn't, did you? No, it's in the contract. You don't have to listen to the program. Judy, do you realize you've awakened my entire household, including my wife? And you know how my wife is in her waking moments. And do you realize... I, I'm sorry, but it's 4.30 and Ubi's got to be at the radio station in time. Please, Mr. Pringle, is he dressed yet? Yes, he's dressed and in the kitchen eating breakfast in his sleep. Well, tell him to hurry. And Mr. Pringle, promise me you'll go right back to sleep. I wouldn't want to break your contract for anything. Back to sleep. Now she tells me. I'm so wide awake after four phone calls I can scream. Not only that, but I think I will. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Mother, Mother, wake up, please. Oh, Judy, what time is it? 4.35. Father, Father, oh. wake up. Oh, what happened? Well, it's almost a quarter to five, Father. You wouldn't want to miss Oogie's radio program, would you? Yes. Father. <laughs> oh, please don't put your head back under the covers. The least you can do when a personal friend of mine is on a citywide hookup is listen to him. Why? Oh, there's Oogie moving his horn for me. I went out of the radio station with him. Father, it's your responsibility to keep Father awake during the program. I've got to run. All right, dear. Good night, Dora. I'm going back to sleep. Now, Melvin, wait up. This was your idea about Oogie going professional, and you're going to suffer through it just like anybody else. <laughs> I couldn't write a better one than that. And that was a little number entitled, I've Got a Date with Judy, played by Oogie Pringle and his high school hot licks, written by Oogie Pringle, arranged by Oogie Pringle, sung by Oogie Pringle, and conducted by Oogie, Oogie Pringle. Pringle. <laughs> oh, well, then. Now, this is Oogie Pringle signing off for now. Good night. I mean, good morning. Now, Dora, may I please go back to bed? <laughs> now, Melvin, the show wasn't so bad. No, no. Nothing that a bottle of sweet air couldn't fix. <laughs> Yes, we heard it. What did you think of it? I thought it was marvelous. Sensational. Father? Mm. <laughs> Father! You didn't like it, Mr. Foster? Oh, now, don't worry, Ogie. He was just in a bad mood because he had to get up so early to listen. Randolph, did you do what I told you to? Yeah, and I'm sure that nobody in town will ever speak to me again. Why? What did you have Randolph do? Oh, I had him call up all our potential sponsors before the program this morning and remind them to be sure to listen. Randolph? You woke them at that hour of the morning to listen to Oogie? Yeah. You know, I heard some of the most interesting remarks I ever heard in my life. <laughs> well, I should think so. Do you think any of them listen, Judy? Of course, Oogie. Why, every businessman in town will be clamoring for you. Yeah? Just you wait. Pretty soon that phone will start ringing. We'll have more sponsors and we'll know what to do with. <laughs> and when I walk down the street, people will say, there she goes. That's the woman behind Oogie Pringle. Oh, Judy, I wouldn't let you walk behind me. <laughs> Oogie, I mean that people will realize that it was I who pushed you forward. Oh, you'll be rich, fabulously rich. Oh, boy. Oh, now, now, look, kids, I don't want to be a wet blanket, but... I don't want you both to have your hearts broken, either. What do you mean, Father? Well, I think you're wrong to build Oogie's hopes up like this. When no one calls to buy the program, he's going to be pretty disappointed. Father! I mean, I don't mean to be unkind. I just don't want you and Oogie to expect something that won't... Well, I happen to be a pretty good judge of what the public wants in the way of entertainment. And much as I hate to say it, Oogie's show simply isn't what the oh, no, public... Oh, I get it. Want... Hello? Yes, it's Judy. What? Really? 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 Oh, that's wonderful. Goodbye. Who was that, Judy? That was Mr. Emerson. He wants to sponsor your program for his hardware store. Oh, boy. Well, that's wonderful. Well, Father? And Emerson, huh? Well, he was never very bright. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. Hello? 
Yes, this is Judy Foster, manager of Oogie Pringle and his high school hot lakes. Oh, yes, I'll be enchanted to discuss it with you. Yes, this afternoon at three. Thank you. Goodbye. Who was that, Judy? That was Mr. Sam Briskin. He wants to sponsor you for his moving picture cameras. Well, I'll be. <laughs> No, Mr. Hibbles. You see, we've had so many offers, I just... Very well, I'll be enchanted to discuss it with you. Yes, this afternoon at four. Thank you. Goodbye. Who was that, Judy? That was Mr. Hibbles. He wants to sponsor Udi for his plumbing store. He says he's willing to plunge. <laughs> yes, Mr. Braun. I'm sorry, Mr. Braun. I wouldn't think of letting you cut Oogie's price. Oh, no, Mr. Braun. I know Oogie very well, and he wouldn't mind a bit paying a big income tax. <laughs> very well. I'll be enchanted to discuss it with you. Yes, this afternoon at 5. Thank you. Goodbye. Who was that, Judy? That was Mr. Braun from the Morris Meat and Vegetable Market. He wanted to give Oogie rutabagas instead of money. <laughs> rutabagas, huh? Yes. I don't like rutabagas. That's what I told him. Oh, isn't this the most exciting day of your life? Yeah, boy, do I feel snazzy. Well, come on. We've got a very busy afternoon ahead of us transacting these business deals. And, Oogie, when I'm transacting, please don't speak. Just sit there looking aloof and talented. All right, Judy. Well, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, dear. Good luck. Have a good time transacting. We will, Randolph. Goodbye, Father. Uh, wait a minute, Judy. Um, yes, Father? Uh, 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 could I uh, speak to you... Uh... Privately? Of course, Father. Well, I'm very sorry, Father, but you're much too late. And besides, I warned you you were passing up a terrific thing. You did nothing of the kind. You hardly gave me a whack at it. Moreover, you deliberately put on the darn program at a time when I was scarcely awake to listen to it properly. Well, that's true. But... I have a right to that program. It was my idea. If anybody's going to sponsor it, I am. <laughs> Hardware, indeed. Plumbing, vegetables, rutabagas. But people who buy cans, now that's something different. All right, Father, if you really it's want... It's the deal, Judy, it's the deal. The Foster Canning Company will sponsor Oogie Pringle. Just a minute, Father. Uh, You've forgotten one thing. What's that? The financial arrangement. The uh, uh, financial... Yes. Thing? Oogie's price has gone way up since this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but, dear, you, you've forgotten one thing. You see, I'm, I'm your father, and, and daughters never take advantage of their own fathers. Father, dear, uh, you're the nicest father a girl ever had for a father. But until we get the financial discussions over, I've never seen you before in my whole life. <laughs> Wake up, Dora. Wake up. Oh, all right, we dear. haven't very much time. Mm. Come on, Randolph. Wake up. Wake up. Oh, all right, Come on. Father. The program will start in just a few minutes. These hours will be the end of it. Did you turn the radio on, Dora? Yes. Now, let me dear. see. I want to make sure you got the right station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. <laughs> you know, I'm a little nervous. The Foster Canning Company, quarter hour. Be quiet, everybody. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> I've got a date with Judy. Now, my song has some originality about it, some uh, imagination. Listen, Dora. I've got a rendezvous with Dora, not Jenny Bell 
Judy, what are cars to me? Pretty soon I'll be able to have one for every day in the week. Oh, yes, Oogie. And maybe two on Sunday. That's a lot, darling. And I've got you to thank for it. Oh, Oogie. If you hadn't made that wonderful deal with your father, where would I be? Just where would I be? Well, even though he is my own father and related closely, I tried to make a good financial arrangement for you. And you did. Boy, imagine getting a thousand a week. Yes, isn't it wonderful? There's only one thing. What am I going to do with a thousand cans? This program was transcribed.